Peterson from Expat TV and I'm here today to chat to you about something that comes up for a lot of expats and people in general, which is how you feel about things. Now feelings are the way they are and a lot of people will allow feelings to take over. For example, they say I can't change it or I can't change that thing, it's just the way I feel about it. So if that's you and if you've ever said those words, it's really important for you to watch today's episode because it's not so much about what other people or situations make us feel or do. It's actually about taking responsibility yourself for what you choose to focus on and what you tell yourself. Because remember that feelings are not who you are. Feelings are simply something that we invite in and they can stick around for as long or as short as we allow them to because we're still in charge. So three really common times when feelings can take over are certain situations, the first one. So if you're in a situation and you're noticing that a certain situ situation or scenario will evoke a certain feeling in you. For example, if you were to miss your flight, you might be really upset and you say, it makes me so angry. This delay wasn't because of me, I was stuck in traffic, whatever it might be. So if you're in a situation that evokes a certain feeling of anger, upset or something else, be really mindful and use language to help you out here. So what you can do, very practical, is if you're in a situation that is making you angry or upset or any of that range of emotion, you can say to yourself that I'm noticing that I'm feeling a little bit X, Y and Z. Because if you take on the emo emotion, emotion, <laughs> just made up in your word. If you take on the emotion of being angry and say, I am angry, you're actually taking it on as part of your identity, which will make it stick around for longer, which you probably don't want. But if you're mindful in your language to yourself and say, I'm noticing that I'm feeling a little bit about upset about missing the flight or whatever it might be. So that's the first one. The second one, if you're around certain people, they may evoke certain emotions in you and it's totally up to you how much you, of this you take on or not take on. The most important thing, yes, you can still use the language trick. It's really effective when it comes to people as well. For example, if you've got someone in your life that makes you upset or says a certain thing that you know you don't particularly enjoy to be around you can use language and say i noticed that every time i'm around person x and we talk about this subject that i feel really sad or i feel really judged or something like that the additional thing that you can do though is be mindful to choose when you're around these people if you have a friend or someone in your life that every time after they've had a beer or two they start giving you unsolicited advice that you never wanted to or asked for you don't have to cut this person out of your life altogether but you can choose how to interact with them and when if there are certain times when you notice it's more common that you feel a certain way allow yourself to avoid those situations with that person because you don't have to be in that situation should you not want to the last third and most important one is the self-talk so every single person in this world, whether they like it or not, has little voices going on in their mind. Our self-talk tends to be a 24-7 kind of thing and it's so natural to us that we don't really question it. What it comes down to though in your self-talk and what goes on in your mind is all about what you focus on. So I work a lot with clients who've gotten a little bit stuck in their self-talk. Very common self-talk for people who are expats and other people as well for that matter is what if it doesn't work out? What if I look like an idiot? What if people judge me? What if I have to come back sooner than I planned? What if, what if, what if? These sort of things happen all the time and it's a way for our ego and our mind to cope with things, especially in times of change. The important thing to remember though, it's kind of like having a radio station on all the time in your head. And the most important thing is that you probably want to be mindful what that radio station is playing. Do you want to play Empowering Beliefs and I'm Awesome FM or This Is All Going to Be Crap and Catastrophe FM? I think you're probably going to favour the first one. So what can you do then? You can use the language trick. You can say, I'm noticing that this is happening or I'm noticing that my thoughts today have been focused a lot around this certain thing over here. The other thing you can do is be really mindful of what you focus on. If you come into a challenging situation or person or you're even noticing that just your own thoughts and reflections that day are very negative or you're being a bit judgmental or you're doing a bit of 
um, almost like a oh, catastrophe type of thinking, you can choose to focus on whatever you want. You can choose to, to, if you notice, for example, something I used to do a lot when I was traveling, I used to think a lot like, what if it doesn't work out? What if this doesn't happen? What if I don't get that job? What if, what if, what if? What I would instead uh, change my language to is imagine if I get that job. Let's picture how it does work out. Or let's picture the exciting, cool things that I'm going to be creating with this. You're then leading your brain to actually create the image or create the reality or create the possibility that this could actually very well happen for you. Because there is a really famous quote that whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Simply what you believe to be true is going to be true for you. And I would really encourage you, especially if you're an expat or a traveler where you're going to encounter new situations a lot more than you might have done in your old place, be really, really mindful of the type of thoughts that you invite into your life because they are going to determine that focus is going to determine um, the outcomes that you get. But you might now say, well, Emmy, that's great, but there are people that annoy me. There are situations that are difficult and I can't always control my self-talk. And sometimes I feel like I can't breathe and it's all too hard. Well, my best advice for you then, literally breathe. Just step back, take a deep breath, and first of all, practice forgiveness. I talk about this all the time, but it's probably the most powerful technique of them all. Be forgiving, be forgiving of people, be forgiving of yourself, be forgiving of situations that didn't turn out the way you'd hoped for. Because in reality, the one of the most beautiful gifts we can give ourselves is that level of certainty in knowing that, yes, there will be challenges, yes, there will be annoying people, and yes, there'll be negative thoughts in my mind. But I firmly believe, despite all those things, that I am able to come up with a solution and meet the challenges that come up in my life. And that's probably the most empowering belief you can have when you're setting out on a big journey, whether it's taking you overseas far away or you're staying right where you are. So I trust that those three tips were really helpful for you. Choose the situations, the people and the self-talk radio in your mind and you will most likely start to notice very different things around you. Until we meet again, happy travels. Mm -hmm.